Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I'm here to answer one of the questions that I get asked most often out in the wild, which is why should I use Airflow? Um, so today I'm gonna make a case for why you should use Airflow and why it's really essential in the world of the modern data stack. Um, so I've actually illustrated kind of a, you know, just found this online, a visual of, hey, what are all the different components that you have to manage just for, you know, a one data pipeline, not to mention, you know, every data pipeline for an entire company. Um, you know, you have Monte Carlo, you have Soda, you have so many different tools for observability. You have tons of different sources where you might be collecting data from APIs, web scraping, you know, Salesforce, customer data, wherever. And there are a variety of ingestion engines you can use for that exact process. Um, so, once you're ingested, then you have all your different data warehouses. You use DBT to actually orchestrate the transformations within your data warehouse to save on processing time. Then once that data has been processed, cleaned, then maybe you're serving it to some BI dashboards. Maybe you're bringing it into your data science team so they can you know, use it for analytics or for training machine learning models. Um, maybe you're actually taking that clean data and reverse detailing it using you know, census or high touch back in to those source systems so the data is clean within them rather than having to orchestrate the transformations within those source systems. Um, and managing all those different things together without kind of a unifying layer uh, that Airflow provides is chaotic. You know, you're switching constantly in between dashboards. You know, you don't really have, if you're not using an orchestration system, you don't have a way to link those different actions in a way that, hey, DBT jobs know not to run until that spark ingestion has actually um, finished running. Um, so it's not running on incomplete data. Um, and that's where Airflow comes in. Airflow is able to not only manage all these different systems, but give you a UI where you can look directly into the logs, what's happening with your DBT workflow, what's happening with your Spark jobs, what's happening with your uh, data quality, um, all within the same Airflow UI. Um, so you don't have to constantly switch between UIs. You have one single source of truth, which is always the guiding light um, of any data-driven organization. Um, and Airflow provides that by giving you that overall connective tissue layer, making sure all of the different systems in the modern data stack um, can work together beautifully. And so here we have a example kind of Airflow workflow that you might use. Um, so as you can see, Airflow, and it's not even mentioned here because it is connecting and running all of these different operations that you see within this diagram. So ingesting some data from you know, a database, ingesting you know, user survey data, social media scraping, loading that all into an S3 staging bucket, uh, then maybe training a machine learning model, performing some transformations within Databricks, storing those results within Snowflake, sending out a Slack notification, and then sending out some of that data to uh, the data scientist team so they can train uh, an experiment using TensorFlow, update some BI dashboards, and also terminate the Databricks cluster to save on uh, Databricks costs. So Airflow is managing all of this. Um, so instead of you, you know, managing these in systems individually, what you'll do is build what we call a DAG um, using Python. And so now I'll show you what a DAG might look like in practice and how a workflow similar to this would be visualized within Airflow. And so here within the Airflow UI, you can see you know, an ETL operation conducted using Airflow. So in this specific example, I am creating a table within Snowflake, then I am inserting some data that I've ingested into that table, running some data quality checks on that data, making sure it, pass, it meets up to my data quality standards. Then once it is past that, loading it into production and deleting that temp table within Snowflake. And the beauty of this is, when I wanna monitor any of these jobs, I don't have to go to the actual source system. What I can do is just click into this Snowflake operator, select the logs, and actually see the insert statement that's being run, its success state, how many rows it's affected, and else with query ID within Snowflake. Um, so it gives you full visualization into each of those systems you're orchestrating without you needing to actually go into those uh, source systems. So when it comes time to troubleshoot, something goes wrong, you're not constantly switching in between panes of glass, and you can cut your time to resolution to much faster by having everything surfaced within Airflow and Airflow managing the connections within between all of your different systems. And these workflows are also really simple to create. So going into the code here, it's all written within Python. Um, you can also use JSON or YAML files 
to create DAGs dynamically using some input variables. Um, but each DAG code at its most core level is just a Python script. Um, and so within this Python script, you'll have your DAG definition, um, and then you'll also have your different tasks, your operators. So here, a Snowflake operator represents an action that I'm performing within the Snowflake database. And so all I need to do is just select the SQL statement, and I can add a connection to Snowflake via my Airflow UI. Um, so instead of needing to hard code all the connection variables, I can create a connection object in a Snowflake and then run all my operations in Snowflake through Airflow. So I never actually even need to monitor Snowflake. Obviously I will, but you really can just have Airflow be how you interact with most of these systems. Um, and the reason it's able to do this is because Airflow is designed to be extensible and scalable. And this is because Airflow, by the fact that it's based in Python and it's just completely customizable because the ultimate customizability is code, you have the option to build out all of these different integrations and providers to interact with different systems and different toolings to help introduce new bits of logic into your Airflow DAGs and give you all the flexibility you need to interact with the ever-changing modern data stack. And this is all driven by the massive ecosystem and community of users around Airflow that are constantly developing and pushing out providers either for their companies or just for their own projects so that you can then leverage their work and bring it into your own project. Additionally, because you're using Airflow to actually manage these tasks, you can use Airflow's rich suite of task management tools. Um, so you can do things like, hey, I want to mark this state as failed, and I actually want to rerun it. I want to clear this task, and then I want to rerun that whole pipeline. Um, and you can do that all within Airflow really quickly. So let's say you know your data was bad, but you know now it's good, and you just want to rerun that point of the pipeline that, cust that uh, ingests that data and uses it for something. You can do that with Airflow versus with you know, using everyone else's native providers, you might have to actually rerun the whole pipeline from the source to actually mimic that same workflow. Um, so now I've talked a lot about the different features of Airflow. How do they fit into some typical use cases? So with your typical machine learning workflow, you will have to manage tons of different steps of every single component of that machine learning pipeline with ultimate reprodu reproducibility and traceability. And that's really what Airflow provides. So you can see here under something like a feature monitoring workflow, you can see every step of your machine learning pipeline without having to use any other system. So you can run all of your different operations, transforming your data, acquiring it, generating those reports, checking drift, triggering retrains if it doesn't meet, the, meet those standards. And you can run tons of different pipelines in parallel using Airflow's highly scalable architecture. So Airflow, Net will manage a pool of worker nodes, typically, that will actually be running your tasks. And that pool of worker nodes can be expanded almost indefinitely to the point where you can have hundreds and even thousands of DAGs running at once. And that's really what you need to manage the scale of modern machine learning workloads. You're managing hundreds of GPUs that all have to be training perfectly in sync to make sure that your data quality and thus the predictions you're generating from the, your machine workloads are top-notch and of the highest possible quality. Um, and so Airflow not only is able to provide the firepower and the compute power to manage all those workflows, it also gives you the visibility, reprodu reproducibility, and traceability that are crucial to making your machine learning pipelines are accurate and successful. And also the bread and butter workflow of Airflow, ETL workflows, it can also handle beautifully. So like I showed you before, it can interact with all those different source systems and filter that information back into you through the Airflow dashboard. So here I have another example workflow where, hey, I'm extracting some Salesforce data, I'm using Census to um, sync it into my Snowflake platform, then I'm running some DBT transformations on that Snowflake, on that data, then I'm using Census again to sync it back into my platform. Um, beginning extraction, I actually ended up using Fivetran to get the Salesforce data out. And it really is capable of handling all of these different things at scale. So you can run, you know, not just this one pipeline, but hundreds of pipelines, or even say, hey, I wanna run this pipeline for all 500 of my customers, pass it those customers' names in a JSON, and you can get hundreds of different parallel pipelines all running, processing that customer data. In the same time, 
it would take you to process one of those customer data sets by leveraging the ability of Airflow to really run as many air data pipelines as you want in parallel. So really, really designed for the modern data ecosystem by able to reach out to all of your different source systems, handle the massive load of a modern organization where you have you know hundreds or thousands of data pipelines running and give you all the visibility and monitoring tools you need around it to gain the visibility you need into your data pipelines. And so I hope this video has at least piqued your interest around getting started with Airflow. Uh, and I encourage you to try it out today. Have a good one.